Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Shell Nuts. This episode is long overdue. We're happy to finally produce this. It's an episode where we're going to show you how to clean, restore, and protect your seashells, bring them back to life, and really uh, show off the beauty and keep them protected for you know, a long period of time. Uh, there's a lot of information on the internet about this, and we've learned from others as well. And then we found some things along the way, so we're going to share what we've learned. And in this video, we're going to do some scrubbing, and we're going to do some picking, and we're going to do some bleaching and we'll do some acid dipping and we'll do some sanding and we'll do some oiling and do quite a few other things and then we're going to put all these techniques to the test with a few project shells that we found down in the keys beautiful shells and we're going to restore these as much as we can and it's kind of fun to take these and have a couple little projects to walk through and go through some of these techniques we learned and see just how beautiful we can make those shells look and i can tell you they turned out great so please sit back relax and enjoy All right, so let's get down to business here. So today we're gonna cover how to clean your shells, uh, both mechanically and chemically. Uh, we're gonna talk about how to kind of restore them if, if they need a little restoration. And we're also gonna talk about how to, you know, maybe clean them up a little bit in terms of if they have rough edges and things you wanna protect the edges from chipping anymore. So. Um, we're going to talk about the different chemicals we use and, and the safety measures and how to dispose of them. So give you kind of a, a full class on, on that. We'll demonstrate how to, how to like put a clear coat on them to protect them or to bring back their natural luster and their natural color if the, sh if the shell is kind of worthy of that. And uh, yeah, we'll talk about all sorts of stuff. It's going to be a great episode. We've, we really look forward to making this episode. So first of all, general rules of thumb it's, it's really actually pretty simple in terms of chemical when you go to a, approach a shell and decide what you want to do with it how can you clean it you know things like that there's this it's actually pretty simple there's really two types of the three types of problems a shell might have uh, one is it's it's either been kind of calcified that's where it's kind of turned kind of a whitish color ghosted a lot of times when you first see the shell in the water, it'll be nice and pretty. And then once it dries out, it turns into this kind of this white milky color. And that's because it's gone through some calcification. And shells that have kind of turned this whitish color like this are great candidates for a muriatic acid dip. Um, and we'll demonstrate that outside. Um, so uh, yeah. And then on the other side, if, it, if a shell has uh, some either some green algae or muck growing on it or it still has some of its original periostracum which is kind of its outer layer uh, you, you know like this you can kind of see some of this this outer layer that's still on it or you know if it's a shell it's got some kind of it's just kind of dirty and got some stuff growing on the outside of it uh it, like a, 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 a an alphabet cones well sometimes you'll see it'll have black stuff on the outside that's its periostracum these are great candidates for a bleach dip, uh, a little bleach and water mixture. The bleach will clean that right off. Um, you might just dip it in there and then we'll demonstrate it as well. And you'll come in and maybe just with a soft brush, you'll, you'll get the rest to come off. But those are great candidates for that. We found this, this big uh, milk conch down in the Keys and we dipped it uh, in, in a bleach mixture and it had all that stuff good. It looked nasty when you pull it out of the water and then... <laughs> Only a few hours later after we dipped it and you just do that a little bit, it turns out real pretty. So bleach is, bleach is your friend uh, when it comes to kind of cleaning muck off of off the shells. And then sometimes you're gonna find shells that have little barnacles or little things growing on them like, like this uh, angel wing does. And that's where you'll need to do a kind of a mechanical cleaning. And, and the best tools we found for that are these dental tools that you can buy a set on eBay or Amazon. They're very strong and they're great for just kind of picking these little guys off, and we'll demonstrate that in the video as well. Sometimes there might be 
uh, just a little flathead screwdriver will work fine as well. Um, but that'll be some of the mechanical cleaning that you'll have to do. Um, and then we'll also talk about how to, if a, if a shell is missing its, its gloss coat, like we have a, a little baby cowrie here where its natural gloss coat kind of got worn down as it, it, you can see it's got a little bit here, but then on the top side, and, and when you restore that gloss coat, the color really pops. So we'll talk about techniques for doing that. And then lastly, sometimes you're gonna find shells that have rough edges on them. There's little places where it's kind of jagged and uh, you'll wanna clean that up because those rough edges can actually chip off even further or they could cut somebody holding the shell. And so sometimes you just wanna clean that up a little bit so that it doesn't chip or break any further and it just adds beauty to the shell. And you can do that with some simple sandpaper and a sanding block or just, you know, you can wrap the sandpaper around different things. And then that way you'll, the shell will, will, uh, will be in better shape, so. All right, and then one last rule of thumb is that if a shell does have a, na a, a natural gloss coat to it, like a lot of times you'll see these horse conks, they're kind of natural gloss, glossy, and you know, some of the cowries and other shells, uh, olives, a lettered olive is another great example of a shell that's naturally glossy. Don't ever dip one of these shells with a gloss coat in muriatic acid. The muriatic acid will strip that gloss coat right off. It'll da damage the shell. And then also, if you're, if you're dipping shells in muriatic acid, uh, be real careful about some of these, uh, like the lion's paws. These lion's paws are actually pretty thin, and if you dip them for too long, you'll actually eat, it'll eat right through the shell, and you'll start to see pinholes in the shell. So there's some shells that are pretty thin, like, like your scallops and things, that you, you want to dip very quickly. And you can just dip for a second or two and then pull out and then take a look and see if it's where, where it needs to be. Try again. This is actually a great example of a shell that needs two different types of cleaning. It's going to need a, a, a dip in the muriatic acid, but there's also some stuff growing on here that you'll have to come in with, you know, with one of these dental tools and you'll just have to slowly just kind of scrape that kind of stuff off. So this is one that needs a little bit of help in, in, with two different types of cleaning methods. So, so uh, let's get outside where it's, it's uh, you know, there's plenty of breeze and fresh air and let's get to work on some of these shells. And we're gonna take them through all the different rounds of cleaning and restoration and show you how, you know, some of the before and afters and uh, talk about some kind of a more additional detail on each step. I almost totally forgot that one of the other steps we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna use mineral oil as well uh, to restore kind of that natural color and give it kind of that wet look that it looks like when you first pull it out of the water. Uh, mineral oil is a, is a, is a, is a oil that is, is odorless. It, it, it doesn't mix with any things. It's, it's colorless. It's a perfect oil for adding kind of a, a little natural shine and kind of depth of color to shells. And uh, we'll also do that. We, we use that on a lot of our shells and we'll show you how we do that as well. All right, in this segment, we're gonna talk about how to bleach your shells to get off some of the gunk that might be growing on them or the periostracum. Uh, also, uh, when you might have some of that on there, uh, again, some really great candidates for, for bleach are, are shells that you find in the keys. <laughs> it seems like the shells you find in the keys always have something growing on them. Uh, on the, on the East coast of Florida, they tumble around so much in the sand that oftentimes they're pretty clean once they hit the beach. I don't, uh, my wife and I, we really don't have to bleach those shells very often at all. And then on the Gulf Coast, uh, the south south uh, west coast of Florida, we, we do find shells from time to time that need to be bleached. Um, so some great examples here are, you know, here are a couple whelks that have a bunch of stuff growing on them. Um, and uh, this, here's another one you can just kind of see the kind of the green stuff that's on there. And uh, so you're just trying to get that, that, this, that kind of that green gunk and anything that might have been growing on them. Here we can see some, you know, some of the uh, some stuff growing on here the, the bleach should be able to take that off and we wouldn't want to use acid because the acid the muriatic acid would 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 take off the gloss coat of the shell. It would really eat into the gloss coat So bleach is a, a much better candidate to try to get this off and uh, here's a real pretty tongue that we just found and it's got some stuff growing all over it 
And, uh, and then uh, here is a, just a gorgeous crown conch, uh, king crown that we found. It's just one of the spikiest ones we've ever seen. And uh, it's got a bunch of stuff growing on. We can't wait to see how this turns out. And then we have a, 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 a bivalve here. Uh, it's, you know, it's just got some little bit of stuff growing on it. And then uh, an alphabet cone. Uh, alphabet cones are really good candidates for, for bleaching because a lot of times they'll have a lot of black stuff on it. And that's the periostracum. And you want to be able to, uh, to it, it'll take it right off. You know, it's, it's actually pretty difficult to get it off, but the bleach will take it right off. This one really doesn't have much. This one's already pretty clean. It's kind of a cool alphabet cone because it's a dual color. It's got the light brown and then the dark brown. It changed colors as it was growing. But there's a little bit of a black line here that we'll try to get rid of. Um, but yeah, so these are really good candidates. Other really good candidates are some of the giant shells that you find. So uh, some of the, the milk conks that we found, um, here's one right here. Uh, this one, you know, we bleached, it had gunk growing all over it, and then we got it really clean when it was all done and it came out real pretty. Um, but there's a, there's a, a fine line. Uh, we didn't bleach it too much because as you can see, it's still got some of that golden color to it, which means that's still some of its periostracum that was growing there. And we didn't want to strip it off. If you put something like this in bleach for too long, it'll turn out like that, right? So we just bleached it a little bit. We were very delicate and, uh, and we just bleached it a little bit to get the stuff growing off that, you know, get start, sorry, get the stuff off that was growing on it, but we didn't over bleach it. And then once we were done, we sprayed this with a clear coat to protect that periostracon because it'll, it'll tend to dry and peel off. So there's a fine line between, you know, how, how much you want to bleach something and how much you don't want to bleach something. Other great candidates for uh, bleaching are when you find uh, these giant uh, ho uh, horse conks. Um, you'll find them, you know, in the Keys or you'll find them on uh, the Southwest coast. And when you find them, they'll have the black growing all over them. They'll have all sorts of gook growing all over them. And these are fantastic candidates. What you'll do is you'll put one of these in a bucket, big five gallon bucket, little $3 bucket from Home Depot. And you'll put a, you'll do a mixture of about two thirds water and one third bleach. And you'll have to leave it there like overnight. You know, these these take a while. That stuff that's growing on there is really thick. So you just leave it there overnight and you come back and then it, that, that, that stuff will come right off. And then you get this beautiful, you know, shell underneath. So really cool what uh, a bleach water mixture can do for these big, beautiful shells. And uh, again, when you're down in the Keys, or you're on the southwest coast and you find a shell and it's got gook growing all over it. Don't be afraid to keep it because there's usually a beautiful shell hidden underneath that gook. You know, just put it in a Ziploc bag or a little cooler, bring it home, do what we're about to do. And man, that shell will really come to life. So let's get to work on these shells. I got a little bowl out of here uh, in, in, in the sink. I've already, I poured enough water into it to kind of cover my biggest shell almost. So I just got the water in there now. It's about the right height for me. And now I'm just going to pour the bleach, the red, you know, to make the mixture. Uh, just for the mixture, I like to do like maybe four parts water, one part bleach. Uh, you, you, you don't want to make it too strong. Uh, if you make it too strong, it can etch the shells and damage the shells a little bit. So I just, yeah, four parts water, one part bleach, and you're not in a rush, right? Sure, you could make it stronger and maybe do it a little bit faster, but there's no rush on this. I'm just going to put, put these shells in this mixture and let them soak, and then I'm just going to eyeball them every 10 minutes or so. And once I think that the, the, the gook that's on them has been, been loosened and uh, I should be able to get it off, I'll just come in with a, something to, you know, kind of, sometimes a lot of it will just fall off, but then sometimes once you're done, you'll just come in and scrub the rest off. And there's different, you could, you know, different scrubbing things. You could, if you want to go really gentle and get in all the nooks and crannies, you could use, we use toothbrushes and things like that. So let's go ahead and get these soaking, kind of see what they look like before. We're going to let them soak and then we're going to circle back and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and scrub them and clean them, and then you'll see what they look like uh, when they're all finished. All right, so it's been about, I'd say about 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, and I'm looking in here and I'm already seeing some great results. That stuff that was stuck on, on, this, on this orange conch, beautiful orange conch, it's all gone. I, I won't have to hardly do any scrubbing at all. It pretty much dissolved right off. And the same with this other beautiful fighting conch. Um, that stuff that was on here has dissolved off. 
it's ready to go. Wow, what a beautiful fighting comp that is with that zigzag pattern on there. And then um, the, the alphabet cone, um, it had a little bit of a black streak here. It was very faint. This wasn't the best example, but uh, we've done others in the past that had a bunch of black on them and those, those, it just comes right off. This one's done, ready to be rinsed. Um, let's take a look at this lightning whelk. We just recently found this one in the Keys. It has some of the prettiest color inside the shell, right in there. It's one of the prettiest ones we've ever found. And yeah, all that, the green that was on here, it's all gone. And that, that one's ready to, ready to be scrubbed off. And how about this amazing crown conch that we found with the crazy spikes on it? It looks so much prettier now. Um, it's ready to just have a little bit of a scrub with the toothbrush and it'll be all done. Uh, sometimes we dip these in uh, acid. They, they react really well to acid, uh, but this crown conch, I don't think we will. I think it's, it's, the color is what it's going to be and it doesn't need that. So we'll just do, do the bleach only and that should be sufficient. Um, let's take a look at this bivalve here. Well, this bivalve is, I don't know, maybe I just need to do a little bit of scrubbing with the toothbrush, but yeah, there, it was mostly black and now it's a lighter color. And I bet if I come in with a toothbrush, we'll be able to get that little bit of, yeah, see that little bit of brown that's there, that's coming off. So it's done, it's ready to go. And now it'll be a little bit wider and show off. Yeah, and then that brown right there, it's kind of scrubbing off too. So um, pretty good results, not great. Um, and let's see, this this beautiful ton, this, it had all that white stuff on it. And let's see if that's kind of ready to come off. Uh, that was a little bit thicker than some of the other shells. Um, it, it's come off partially. I'm going to scrub it a little bit. If, if I feel like it still hasn't come off enough, I'll put it back in and, and, and let it sit for a little while. You can see there's some, still some stuff here, and if that doesn't come off, I'll let it sit for a little while longer until we get it all off. But it is getting better, so um, we're headed in the right direction. Again, uh, sometimes you have to put them back in for a little longer. It's, it's better to be safe. And sorry, and not let them over soak, you know, for too long. Just pull them out. And if they need more time, just put them back in, right? So this one probably needs a little bit more time. Um, and then we have a couple lightning. Well, oh, this one's starting to really show off. Um, this one's a little bit lighter in color. It's one of the bigger ones we've, we've found. Um, but it's just naturally kind of light in color. Um, so probably this is about as good as this one's going to get. Um, it's so shiny and glossy on the inside. Really, really pretty on the inside. Um, but it's just kind of naturally light, and that's just the way it's going to be. Okay. And uh, and then finally, we, what do we have? Another, this is a really pretty orange. It has really a lot of orange in this one, sorry. Uh, it's very orange, uh, a light orange color. Really a cool lightning whelk. Um, and then we have this real baby, uh, real small uh, fighting conch here. This really didn't have much in it. Overall, though, they were done in like 10 to 15 minutes. And uh, I'm just going to give them a little scrub. The ton will let that uh, soak a little bit longer, and then we'll put them up on the towel and let them dry off, and then we'll take a picture, kind of that after picture, and we'll see the difference. All right, so for our last two shells, uh, this ton really came out pretty. Uh, it got most of the stuff off uh, that was the gunk that was on here, both on the inside and the outside. Um, there's still a little bit of whiteness here, but I think that's just gonna be the natural coloration. If you hold this up to the light, there's actually, these shells are so paper thin, that's why it's hard to find one that's not broken. We're super happy to find this. This is the nicest one we've ever found. Um, they're paper thin, and there's already some little, little. there's two little pinholes here. I could try to dip this in a muriatic, or just spot treat it with muriatic acid, but I think it would eat right through the shell, and I'd wind up with even more holes. So I don't want to do that. I think I'm done. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean up this edge on the sander just so that it's not so jagged and it'll preserve the edge. And then I'll put some, probably just some mineral oil on it. And this will be, uh, this will be a beautiful shell. So this really came out nice. And then we let this um, bivalve soak for a little bit longer and it just continues to get prettier and prettier as we let it soak. I am a little nervous though that the, the hinge is going to give out on it. Um, so... I may just go ahead and see it's already starting to give out a little bit. And that's why we kept it because it was hinged. Um, so it'll probably just sit like this and the top has come out real pretty and shiny. And I think this one's done also. So I think we're done with the bleaching and we'll just let these dry and we'll look at them one final time once they're dry so you can see the difference. But I, I gave them a good look already and they look a lot better than they did before. So um, yeah, let's give it a few more minutes and we'll check back. All right, we've uh, let these 
these guys dry out for about an hour and uh, loving the results I'm seeing here. The, 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 the fighting conks, they have no more of any, any like gook on the outside, just naturally shiny and beautiful. This one needs nothing. It's just ready to go and enjoy being displayed in a collection. Uh, the same with this one. This one's absolutely gorgeous. Nothing left. The bleach did a great job of getting those cleaned up. Um, the, there's no more of a little black layer here so that the, the, the alphabet cone cleaned up really nicely. Also the boy, this, uh, this, uh, crown, uh, king crown just came out gorgeous. No, no more stuff on the outside. Um, just beautiful. So, uh, and then the, the ton, I believe it's a partridge ton. Um, it, it's, it's starting as it's dried out, it's gotten a little hazy again, but you know what we're going to use on this next? We're going to hit this with some, some mineral oil and it's going to bring that natural shine back out, give it that wet, deep look. As a matter of fact, let's just do it right now and see what happens. I'm kind of excited to see what happens when we do that. So we're going to just put that back on there and there it goes. There's that beautiful color coming back. So I'm going to just coat this. I might even do two coats just to give it an extra soak, but all that stuff's gone and all that pretty patterns being revealed. Way to go bleach. You got this cleaned up really nicely for us. The same with these uh, lightning whelks. This came out really pretty. It's got some orange highlights on it. Um, no more mess on it. Again, we'll hit this one and, and this beautiful orange. This is such a really cool orange you see on this lightning whelk. We'll hit those with some mineral oil. This one we really didn't see much results on, and that happens sometimes. This one's just kind of naturally faded. Uh, we could probably try to dip this in some muriatic acid to get maybe some of this calcification off, but we've seen with, with shells like this that are kind of in this state. You can try. There's nothing wrong with, with trying, right? You're not going to hurt anything, but um, really, you really won't improve much if you do that. So it's just, it's just kind of gotten worn down over the years. It's a pretty big shell, so... Um, so probably can't improve that. But overall, super happy with the results we got with the bleach. And uh, yeah, I think it's a wrap. All right, so in this section, we're going to talk about muriatic acid and, and techniques for using it and, and being safe and properly disposing of it. And shells that we have found that really respond well to muriatic acid dips are your scallop shells, your lion's paws, um, the the king crown uh, really responds well. A lot of times it's very calcified and, and after a good dip it really pops. Uh, so we've got a couple of those. Uh, the lace murex and the apple murexes, the different murexes respond well. Uh, sometimes the, uh, the tulips will, sometimes they won't. You want to be careful. For example, these two, these two really aren't that calcified. That one, yeah, I mean, it's a little white, but if you dip this in, in muriatic acid, it's probably not gonna improve that much. And in fact, I don't really see any reason to dip this one, but this one's got a little bit of white calcification along the top. So maybe, I, and but the bottom looks pretty good. So maybe I'll just dip the top of that. So there, uh, but, but the murexes, the king crowns, the scallops and lion's paws, Sometimes these uh, lightning whelks, they really respond well if they're kind of calcified and they look a little hazy and white. They do really well with muriatic acid. So where do you get your muriatic acid from? Well, I got ours at Home Depot. It was like 12 bucks for this big bottle. Um, and then how much of it do you use? Well, before you start using it, make sure you have the right stuff on. I'm outside today. There's about a 20 mile an hour breeze you want to be outside using this stuff because when it starts to bubble and fume, it's it's really toxic. I tried using it once inside. I didn't pay attention and, and I got a real bad headache when I was using it. So you want to be outside. You want to be somewhere where there's a lot of ventilation, a lot of wind. Uh, if, you, if there's not much wind that day, you probably want to put on a breather uh, just to, to be extra careful. Today, there's about 20 miles an hour breeze out here. I got the microphone covered up so you probably don't hear it, but it's pretty windy outside, so it's a very good day. And also, I'm, I'm downwind. This is my muriatic acid that I'm gonna mix, and the wind's blowing to the, to the that way, and I'm gonna be standing to the right, so I should never be in the fumes. So you wanna stay out of the fumes. Another very important thing to use 
is protective eyewear. You have to put this on. A little drop, a little splash into your eye and you'd be in big trouble. So be sure you put this on. Um, and then lastly, you can see I'm wearing some rubber gloves. Just safe to have those on as well. Um, so how much muriatic deep acid do you need to use? Well, it's pretty simple. You want to use the least amount as possible. That way there's less to dispose of later. And so we like to use a tall glass instead of something wide because we end up using less. And this is just like a glass vase that we found that is pretty good for that. And the, the, the amount you need to mix is you want to mix maybe one third muriatic acid, two thirds water. And so I've already got my two thirds water and the total amount with the water and muriatic mixture should be enough to cover your biggest shell. So I'm aiming for something that's maybe about that much. So I've got yeah, about two thirds of the water I need. I might need a little more in there. I think I'll go ahead and pour just a little bit more. There we go. And now I'm gonna mix my, my acid in the water. You always wanna add acid to water, not the other way around. Don't ever pour your acid in first and then pour the water into the acid. So I'm gonna add my one third mixture of acid. And just in case you're wondering what muriatic acid is, it's just a cleaning agent. It's also used to set the right pH in pools. Uh, in when it's watered down, it's pretty harmless. Uh, but in in its mixture right out of the bottle, it's uh, it's pretty strong. Uh, but after we get done, we're going to show you how to dispose of this stuff. It's really easy to dispose of. It's very easy to neutralize. And once it's neutralized, it's completely harmless. And uh, we'll show you how to do that as well. That way you feel comfortable using it and you don't have to you know, feel bad about how you dispose it. We'll completely neutralize it. Also, one thing I like to have handy when I'm working with muriatic acid is a bucket of water. Just in case I have an accident, knock something over, uh, the bu bucket of water is handy to, to dilute the acid. And also, we're actually going to use that bucket of water later to neutralize it. We're going to use this big bag of baking soda. Baking soda is used to neutralize acid. So if you ever need to neutralize acid quickly, muriatic acid, you just throw some baking soda on it or you dump lots of water on it. Um, so I have both handy. Um, so I think we got our mixture ready and we got everything set. So I'm going to put the camera right here and let's go ahead and get started. Now I just, I took a photo of these shells that we're going to dip. And so you've got the, we got the before picture. I'll go ahead and dip them, rinse them, let them dry out. And then we'll take a picture of them after I'm done and we'll see the difference. And then once they dry out again, we'll come in with a mineral oil and rub them with mineral oil and that's going to make them look even better. But first, let's get the calcification off with the muriatic acid. One of the things we like to use are uh, tongs when we're going to dip. Uh, one other technique you can use is if you have a shell that you just want to spot treat, sometimes you don't need to treat an entire shell. There might be a shell that's got something growing on it. I've, I've done this before and you can spot treat. You can dip a little little foam brush like this into your muriatic acid mixture and you can just dab it you know where you want it to, to hit the shell that way maybe if you have something like it's got a real pretty shiny cloth gloss coat on the bottom and you don't want to ruin that but you're trying to get something off the top or you're just trying to clean up a certain portion of the shell you can just dip and just dab it on and then once you just let it you know, let it do its work for a little bit and, and rinse it. And I've done shells like this before where I had to dab 10, 20 times to get off this, whatever it was that I was trying to get off with the acid. So these are really useful. We use these all the time, particularly around big shells, like our horse conks, where we're trying to get something off and it comes in real handy. Uh, but let's go ahead and start dipping these shells and see how, and get them all cleaned up. And then we'll see how they turn out. So we'll do a couple here in, in slow, you know, in regular speed. And then the rest we'll just do in a normal speed. So I like tongs with rubber on the end because they seem to get a better grip. And uh, just going to go ahead and dip this guy in here. And then I usually count to about three, and that's usually good enough. It doesn't take long for this that acid mixture to do what it wants to do. And you don't want to overdo it. You can always underdo it, right? You can pull it out, let it dry. Okay, we're just rinsing it in water here to get get that acid off, right? And uh, let it dry and if you feel like it you know it wasn't enough do it again but don't ever overdo it because you can ruin shells with acid when you overdo it 
But again, it's, it looks good because it's wet, but let's let these shells dry out, okay? And then we'll truly see the, the impact of the acid. So we'll, we'll do that one. And then this was a, this was a scallop that I found, uh, that we found on the Pacific coast in California. I've been waiting a long time to dip this one and let's go ahead and get that one in there. Two, three, all right, okay. And hopefully once uh, that dries out, that will have gotten some of that white off. And then one more that kind of been waiting to, to dip as well. This one's actually in really good shape, this lion's paw. Doesn't have any broken knuckles on it. Doesn't really have anything growing on it. I can see some pinholes in it already. So I know that it's pretty, it's a thin shell and we just don't, don't want to leave it in the acid for too long. So I'm just going to do a quick dip on this guy just to knock a little bit of that haze off. But I'm not going to do three seconds. I might only do like one and a half, two on this guy. One, two. All right. A little, a little quicker with him. Okay. Because I have dipped lion's paws uh, for too long or too many times. And it actually ate away the shell very quickly and it hurt the shell. So here's another one. Um, here is a uh, calico scallop. Beautiful calico scallop. It's got a little haze on it. Let's do that one. And then lastly, the one we'll do in, in regular speed is this uh, King's Crown. You can see it's really hazy. And we find King's Crowns all the time that are really hazy like this. And they really respond well to a quick muriatic acid dip. And look already how much different that looks. It's incredible how well these respond to that deep. So much, look at that, it's like completely different. So really cool the way it works so well on those. So I'm gonna go ahead and dip the rest and, uh, and we'll circle back. All right, so we're done doing our, our dipping of our shells and we're just gonna let them dry out and then we'll take a picture after they're dried out to see what the muriatic acid did by itself in terms of making a difference. Um, but now what we need to do is we need to dispose of the chemicals that we used. How do we do that? Well, first of all, I'm just going to dump this water that I used to rinse things off. It has very little muriatic acid in it. I'm going to go ahead and dump this water out in this bucket that I have nearby that's full of water already. And then I'm going to pour out the muriatic acid into this big bucket of water as well. And this is, I mean, there's, this is already two thirds water. So you've just got a little bit of muriatic acid, which is good. You didn't use much and you're dumping it into a major size bucket of water here. This is a five gallon bucket. It's probably already three gallons of water in there. So it's probably only going to be about one part muriatic acid and 30 parts water. Um, so you're already diluting it with water, which is helping, right? So let's go ahead and do that. And then those, these, these are safe to just rinse out in the sink. There's very little acid left in them, so you can just rinse those out in the sink. Now, what are we going to do with the acid that's in this bucket? Well, the way you neutralize muriatic acid is with baking soda. Baking soda basically completely is the opposite of acid it's an alkaline and it will render the the acidity uh, just basically gone and so uh, let's go ahead and pour some uh, baking soda into the water and it should react in, in foam and you know you're done when when you put baking soda in the water and it doesn't fizzle anymore so let's go ahead and do that now As you can see, you don't want to be standing around that when it's doing that. You want to be away from the breeze. But basically that baking soda, it was neutralizing the acid that's in that water. We're going to let it settle and we'll throw a little bit more baking soda in. All right. 
neutralizing it a little bit more not as much as last time so we're making progress all right let's do a little bit more all right no reaction no reaction at all that means you've completely neutralized the acid it's completely safe stick my hand in there no problems it's you could pour it out on the ground you could pour it anywhere it's completely neutralized it's completely harmless and uh, so what we can do is we can we can what I usually do is I just pour it uh, down the, the sink of the kitchen if or I can pour it out um, in the toilet um, but it's completely safe to dispose of it's a completely neutral water now and uh, safe to get rid of so it's, you can see it's super easy to dispose of it safely and uh, and so it's easy to use and you should take take advantage of it it's a great chemical it works great works great on shells it works great on boats it works great on cleaning things and you also pour it in your pool to neutralize the the acidity acidity of the pool it's used for all sorts of good stuff but it really helps us out with our shells Okay, for this segment, we're going to talk a little bit about cleaning off some of the barnacles and other things that might you might find on a shell. On the, on the east coast of Florida, we don't really get too many barnacles on our shells. They have tumbled so much in the sand by the time they get to our beach and our coarse sand. They're usually pretty clean once we find them, um, almost a little worn down for that matter. Uh, we do get lion's paws that have some things growing on them, and this is a great example. It's just, it's just got little bits of white muck that's kind of growing on them on it both on both sides and you might look at that and go oh there's just no way i'm going to get that clean but for a really large lion's paw like this it's worth the time i mean to find a big one like this just laying on the beach is rare and so i i, I whenever i find something rare and special i'll take the time to clean it up and once upon a time on john d MacArthur, i found my my best red lion's paw this guy right here uh, in, in Palm Beach, I found this one, and it pretty much looked like this when I first found it on both sides. You may not believe it, uh, but it's amazing how clean you can get something. So I used uh, tools like, like these, these dental tools that have the, those tungsten steel tips, and, and you just kind of just scratch away at it. And this stuff, a lot of this stuff will just pop right off, okay? And I'll do it while I'm under the water, and... Uh, and then also, I also used um, a little bit of muriatic acid. I, I, I spot, spot uh, applied it with a little foam brush. I would go in and just hit it with a little foam brush. And it was a lot of work, um, but it, these are pretty special shells. I think they're worth it. And the results, I mean, it came, it came out beautiful. So uh, it's one of the prizes of my collections. So, But most of the time, you won't be faced with that sort of project. Most of the time particularly on the, on the Gulf Coast of Florida, you're gonna find some really pretty shells that have little barnacles growing on them. You'll see calicos all the time that have little things growing on them. And this angel wing here has got a few little little uh, barnacles growing on them. And most of the time you can come, come in with, you know, pick whatever shape you like to use most. And these little guys will just kind of, these little guys will just kind of scrape right off. Um, and I like to do it under running water because uh, as you're doing this, they uh, they can just pop anywhere, right? So if you're doing it under running water, 
um, a lot of times it, it'll keep it from flying across the room when it when it pops off. Now an angel wing is a very delicate shell, so you could, you know, you, you might as you're popping one off, you could damage it. I've actually never tried getting a barnacle off of an angel wing when you turn that water off. So, uh, but like a calico, it's, 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 it's a very durable shell, like this big barnacle here. Uh, let's see if we can pop this big barnacle off. That's a pretty big barnacle. And a lot of times you think, oh, it's going to be damaged underneath. But no, the, you know, a lot of times you pop, pop these barnacles off and it's completely gorgeous underneath. There's like no damage to the shell. So let me see if I can pop this, this barnacle off and, uh, and let's see how that goes. So I'm just going to put it under the running water a little bit and just try to pop, work my way around. It might come off in pieces. No, oh, it came right off that easy. Look, gone. And underneath, it's a nice color. There's a little bit of stuff there we might go. And look at that. It's perfectly beautiful underneath. And so don't be afraid when you find a shell with something stuck to it. A lot of times it'll pop off very easily. Um, let's try this one. Look at that. It came off so easily. I just stuck a little point of the tool under there. Look, it's a perfectly beautiful shell now. Um, really cool. Um, earlier in one of the videos when we were working on this shell, I noticed this guy, this lightning whelk, has some things growing on the inside. You just use the same tool, stick it under there. Boom! Look at that. Just popped right off of there. Let's try this one right here. You gotta be careful with these tools. Yeah, look, just popped right off. Just rinse that off. Might go in and scrub it a little bit with a scrub brush. But now this beautiful lightning whelk has no more stuck to it. And this little stuff here, we can just get that off with a scrub brush maybe a little bleach or something, but that'll be a perfectly beautiful shell now. So yeah, really cool how easily a lot of these things will just fall right off. And again, you can you can buy these tools on um, like eBay or Amazon. They're cheap and they last forever. The tips on these things are st extremely strong and durable. They work great. There's different shapes. I've sometimes I've used, they, sometimes a shell will get stuck down inside and the ones that have the hook you can use to hook things out and really, great shells so again uh, don't be afraid if you find a shell with stuff growing all over it uh, you keep it you know if you feel like you can just tell that there's a beautiful shell under there keep it because you can take it home do some things to it and make it beautiful again all right so now you've you've got your shells cleaned up you've either You've either dipped them in muriatic acid or you've let them soak in bleach for a little while and you've let them completely dry out. And now they've dried out, they've kind of, again, lost their color a little bit or turned a little white or whatever. And they're like, ah, oh, it, it helped. It certainly helped the shells. But now I, I wanna do that final step. And the final step, a lot of times, is to add a little mineral oil to them to, again, give them that, that deeper, richer look and maybe add a little bit of a gloss coat back to them. And mineral oil doesn't last forever. Um, it'll eventually kind of dry out and you can just come back and reapply it again, maybe a year later, two, late, two years later. Um, it's, it's not permanent. And you might ask yourself, well, why don't you just go ahead and add like a, a clear coat to them? Because a clear coat would do the same thing. Um, but there's, there's some shells I just don't want to, I don't want to paint, you know? I, 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 I prefer that they not be like really glossy, you know? or or, uh, and I just want to do something simple. And, and mineral oil is just a simple way to do that. So um, let's take a, a, I'm gonna go ahead and apply the mineral oil. There's a couple different ways you can do it. You can just, you know, you can just add it to a little rag. Very simple. You're just gonna dab it on there like that. And then you can just start applying it to the shell, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and it's in some shells, you're gonna see huge results. You know, like this shell, not really seeing the, the colored change too much right um, so some shells but it, it'll help a little bit on some shells and in some shells it'll make a huge difference there's some shells where um, you'll really start to see I mean this is making a big difference on this shell those browns are really starting to come out a lot more and um, so when you put the oil on you'll you can you might put it on a little bit thick at first and then uh, let it soak for a little while and then come back and wipe the excess off with it with a dry part of the towel um, I, I found that, that mineral oil works amazing on calico scallops and that purple really r starts to really come alive and, and, and these scallops they dry out and they, and they get kind of dull and then this mineral oil just brings them right back to life 
works great on those. So it's a little oily, so I'll come back in and wipe, wipe off some of the excess. And uh, yeah, and so mineral oil, it's, it's your friend. It's really great for shells. And whenever we put together shell collections, uh, like in these jars that we have, let me go grab one here. Um, here's one right here. Nearly every shell that's, that's in this jar that we put together in this collection, we have rubbed a little mineral oil on it as, as we put them in there. And again, it'll last for a long time, particularly in a jar like this, it won't dry out. It's not exposed to air as much or wind or anything like that. But um, yeah, it's really, it's really great, great thing to use. And let's, let's try, and uh, let's try another one. This one is a uh, um, moon snail, a uh, shark eye that has lost its kind of its gloss coat. It's probably rolled around in the sand a little bit too much. And we could spray paint it again with some, some clear lacquer and that would help it out. But uh, I'd rather just try to rub some mineral oil on it. And uh, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna bring back kind of that kind of natural glossy and a little bit more color coming out of it as we do that. Um, so again, mineral oil is simple, it's cheap, it's fun. And uh, it's a great way to bring life back to your shells. You will encounter some shells uh, that, uh, you, you know, a, a, a towel, a little towel might be tough to get into some of the little crooks and crevices and stuff like nooks and crevices. Um, so sometimes we'll use a, a, a toothbrush, you know, we'll put a little, little oil on the toothbrush and we'll just spread the oil around like that. And uh, yeah, so that's another way that you can put the oil on uh, if it's kind of an oddly shaped shell and you can just come back in and try to dry it off the best you can with, with, the, with the towel, wipe off the excess. So um, let's try uh, another great shell for, for mineral oil is, is the banded tulip. A lot of the banded tulips we find will lose a little bit of their gloss coat. And then as soon as we rub them down with mineral oil, the color really returns really nicely and uh, it gets a little bit of that glossiness back to it. So we really uh, think that mineral oil works great on your banded tulips. And here is a real pretty um, lightning whelk. And uh, they, uh, this looks like an excellent candidate as you start to just rub the mineral oil on there. It, those lines, the, the contrast, the color starts to come out and it really brings this, this guy back to life as well. So um, very simple thing to do. Wonderful technique for your shells. Please be sure to put that on there and, and bring these beautiful shells back to life. And uh, yeah, simple technique. So next up, we're gonna talk about when do we apply uh, different kinds of clear coats and how do we do that? All right, so there's sometimes where you'll have a shell, usually some of your larger shells, where you'll want to try to protect them and restore a little bit of their shine and uh, the mineral oil really isn't a good candidate for the bigger shells. Uh, the, the mineral oil, first off, you'll, you'll, you'll have this giant shell that you wanna hold and pass around to people, and you don't want oil. The oil will get all everybody's hand, all over everybody's hands and stuff. So the, the mineral oil isn't a good candidate. What is a good candidate for some of these larger shells that you wanna kind of restore and also protect at the same time is just putting on a coat of a clear, uh, a, a lacquer or an, or an enamel. And there's different kinds and then they'll, res the, they'll, they'll provide different results. So let's talk about that. So for like a real thin coat where you just want a little bit of a, a gloss, not, not really thick, uh, I, I find this, this lacquer from Rust-Oleum works really well. I'll just put a very light coat on like I did on this, this giant uh, a horse conch and um, it was great. You know, it just added a little bit of shine, not much, just a little. It was kind of exactly what I was looking for because the shell does have a little bit of a natural luster. So I was just trying to give it that little bit of that natural luster back to it. And that, that lighter coat uh, worked great. And I'm going to do the exact same thing to this. Uh, milk conch we recently found in the Keys. This this milk conch is is naturally glossy, but it has been in the sea for so long that and maybe tossed around in the sand that it is kind of dull now. It's lost its its little bit of its gloss coat, and uh, we want to bring that back because when we bring that back, it's 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 real it's really beautiful. We've done this with two others, and the milk conchs really react nicely to a nice little light coat of of lacquer. So. We're gonna do that one in a second. Some other great candidates we found are for a light coat 
is sometimes if you find a really beautiful fighting conch, Florida fighting conch, uh, a lot of times they'll have this beautiful natural gloss coat on the bottom side. You can see how shiny that is already. And that's its kind of its natural shine, but sometimes it'll lose a little bit of its natural shine on top. And uh, maybe you want to restore a little bit of that shine on top. Maybe you don't, you know, sometimes just a little mineral oil is fine too. It's totally subjective. Some people would do it, some people wouldn't. But if you have some sort of beautiful Florida fighting conch that you just want to add a little bit of that shine back to, maybe a light coat of lacquer would work nicely. Also, uh, I found this, I mean, this thing is just enormous, this giant shark eye. And it, it, it was so, it's the biggest one I've ever found and it had lost its, its shine. And I, I added a little bit of a gloss coat back to that, just a light gloss coat, not nothing, nothing major. I didn't even do the bottom. I just did a little bit of the top and I think it helped the shell a little bit. So when would you use a thick coat? And I had real good results with this Rust-Oleum uh, triple thick glaze. When would you want to use a thick coat? And it's really only on a shell that has a natural thick coat of gloss. And really the only shell that we've ever used this on and we've had great results is a cowrie. A cowrie has a very natural uh, thick gloss coat, but it, you know, on its way into the ocean, particularly here, excuse me, on its way to the beach from the ocean uh, here in, in, on, the, on the east coast of Florida, it's going to tumble through that coarse sand and that sand is going to act like sandpaper. And a lot of times the top side of it it's been sanded down and it gets real dull. And this one you can see has been sanded down. And not only does it lose its gloss coat, but it also, because it, the gloss coat also, it loses a little bit of its, its color, um, its, uh, its contrast. So we've uh, done two calories in the past where we added a thick coat in it. Man, it really brought that calorie back to life. So, so today, in today's video, we're gonna, we're gonna put a thick coat on this calorie and we're gonna put a, a light coat on the milk conch, do a little before and after, and let's check out the results. All right, so in this section, we're going to put a clear coat on two shells that, uh, that are in need of it. Uh, we have a, a milk conch that has is really lost all of its natural gloss coat. And uh, we've gone ahead and cleaned up this milk conch. We, we, we did a bleach bath and got all the gunk off of it. And then I came in and with some tools and also with a little bit of muriatic acid, I, I did some just some spot applications to the to top section here to clean it up a little bo bit more. And now it's completely ready to go. So if you want to see the difference, uh, this, is a, this is a milk conch that has kind of its natural shine and uh it's, you know it's it really makes a huge difference uh in in the beauty of the shell so we want to go ahead and apply a clear coat to this shell and the the, the paint that we're going to use for this one is the lacquer the lacquer goes on thinner it dries very quickly because i just want to do kind of a light coat on top i don't want it to be super glossy on top i just want kind of a light coat kind of like what you see here it's a, it's a very light coat and that'll help keep it protected and keep this periosticum if you kept bleaching it, you could actually turn this this milk conch completely white. Um, but we want we like kind of a little bit of the the periostracum still on there that gives it that color. Uh, so the clear coat will help protect that and seal that in as well. So the clear coat's helping us out in a, in a couple ways. Now on the other side, I'll want that clear coat to be a little bit thicker. So I'll probably only do like one one light coat on top, and then uh, maybe a couple coats on the bottom. And the other shell we're going to do is this cowrie. This cowrie, the Atlantic deer cowrie, it's a small one, but it tumbled around in the sand too much. And uh, it's still nice and shiny on the bottom, so we won't do the bottom. But the top, it really tumbled around a lot in the sand, and it completely lost its coating. And I found that a thick coat um, uh, with this paint, it, it, it works better. This goes on very thick. You really only have to do one coat with this. And uh, I find it, it creates a more even coat than if I tried multiple coats of this lacquer. That's just the experience that I've had. So for calories, I, I tend to use this triple thick glaze paint. So that's the paint I'll use for this. So uh, first thing we need to do is make sure when you go to paint that you're in an area where there's a little bit of circulation 
uh, so the fumes don't get to you. But you don't want to be in a place where there's so much circulation that there's dust and debris flying around because that stuff will land in your paint when you're drying. So find a place where there's not a lot of, you know, stuff flying around in the air. Second of all, I like to put, I used I like to paint on top of a piece of cardboard. Uh, it, it just soaks in the paint so that if I later I want to turn something over and do that, it's not going to stick. Don't ever paint on like newspaper or cloth or anything like that. Uh, I find uh, the cardboard's good to paint on. Before you go to paint, make sure you really shake up the can really well. I, I would shake it for two to three minutes. You want you want that the paint to be really even inside so that when you go to spray it, it turns out nice and even. Particularly on a cowrie, you want that coating to be nice and even. You don't want it to be lumpy. So go ahead and shake your can up. And then once you've sh I've already I've already shook it up a lot. So. Uh, once you've done that, just test spray it a little bit just to make sure that the, the paint's coming out nice and easy. If it's a new can, it usually comes out nice and easy, but if it's a can you've used several times, you might have to do it a few times just to get it to come out nice and clean. And then when you're ready to paint, uh, just in case you haven't done much spray painting with a can before, the way you, the way you paint is you, you start to either the right or the left to initiate the spray, and then you just go across it. Don't ever aim your can right at a, a shell and spray it that way. You start to the left or the right and you go across the shell and then you just keep going back and forth. Um, you wanna apply light coats. This stuff goes on light. You, you can always come back. If you didn't get enough on the first coat, you can come back and do it again. So I'm just gonna apply a light coat on this side, then I'll spin it around. I'll do the other side and uh, we'll, we'll tackle the top first. So it's very easy to do. We're just gonna, just kind of go like that and put that little bit of a coating on there. That's plenty. And then we'll just spin it around. And we'll come in and we'll do this side as well. Now I'm just going to let that dry. The nice thing about the lacquer is it dries extremely quickly. It's almost, it's dry in like five minutes. So I love that. This stuff dries very slowly because it goes on very thick. So this one almost takes a couple of hours to dry before you can touch it. But you only have to do one coat with this. So... That's good. So we'll let this dry for a few minutes. We'll come back in, we'll examine it, we'll see, you know, is, are we happy with that light coat or do we want to do a second light coat on top? And then uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll evaluate then. All right, so it's only been about four or five minutes and this thing, as you can see, I can already touch it. So I'm gonna have a look at this. Um, I, what I'm shooting for is just a little bit of a gloss coat, but not something overly glossy because it's not it's not naturally overly glossy. So I think, you know, this part looks pretty good. It's got a little bit of shine and it's protected. And another reason why you put clear coats on these shells is to protect the, like the oils that you have on your fingers. When people handle them, the clear coat will protect the shell and the periostracon from the oils on your fingers. So it's, a, it's another reason why sometimes you want to protect some of your shells with a clear coat. So I think this, this looks pretty good, but I, I didn't quite hit the, the center section very much. So I'm gonna go ahead and just spray the center section again, this and, and, and maybe this side a little bit. So I'll give it another light coat, and I think that'll do it. And then we'll be ready to flip it over and put several coats on this side. So I think I'm just gonna position it like that. And I'm gonna come in and hit this side again. And then hit this, this guy a little bit. And then maybe just another little light spray right there. And honestly, I think that'll be enough for this side. So we'll give it about maybe 10 minutes to dry. And then I'm going to flip it over. And then we'll hit the other side and we'll be done. I mean, this, this doesn't take very long with this lacquer. That's the wonderful thing about the lacquer is you can finish this stuff very quickly. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes. And now we're going to uh, examine this, this side and... I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this now. It's got a little bit of a shine to it, not too much, and it seems like it's pretty pretty well coated on the top. So now I'm just going to flip it over and uh, do the other side. And this side I'm going to put a, a little bit thicker of a coat on, so I'm just going to do multiple coats. You, you, you want to do light coats. You never want to do a heavy coat all at once because it'll run. This is a, you know, this is a round object or cylindrical object and the paint will run. So you have to do light coats on these sorts of objects. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing to this side that I did to the other side, but I'll just do it a few more times, you know, about five minutes, five to 10 minutes wait between the coats. 
And again, the nice thing about the cardboard is it's dry. It's not going to, the, the shell isn't going to stick to it, you know, when I flip it over. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do this side as well. This side really comes to life uh, when you put a clear coat on this side. Uh, I'm always excited to do that, this side. So I'm just going to do that a little bit there and then just spin it around and hit this side as well. And that's it. I'm just going to do that about four, maybe four times and just kind of it'll layer up and then we should have a really pretty gloss coat when we're all done. All right, so I applied about five coats to the, the bottom side and uh, it's still maybe a little tacky uh, to the touch uh, because it's a thicker coat, but it's good enough to handle and I uh, just love how it turned out. It's nice and shiny now and the, and the color is a little, well, at least this almost looks like a marble. It, it just looks a lot better now on the bottom side and it's protected from my fingerprints. And the other side has a little bit of a gloss coat to it as well, not too much, which is good. We don't want the top to be too shiny, but came out beautiful. Uh, I'm gonna let it dry a little bit more, but it's 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 all done and I'm, I can put it on display in our house and really show it off and uh, really happy with how that turned out. So next yeah, up is our calorie and uh, I'm going to give a kind of a close-up here maybe in the Sun so you can just kind of see that it it's kind of lost most of its gloss coat on the top and the calorie is it's it's shiny enough on the bottom I don't need to touch the bottom but we want to restore that thick gloss coat that a, a, a calorie has uh, naturally uh, you, whenever you see them in the shell stores and stuff they have this really really shiny deep thick gloss coat we want to give that back to it so it, it both protects it but also it just makes the spots and the colors underneath uh, just stand out better so we want to restore that and again i'm going to use this type of paint it's this uh, triple thick glaze paint i find this creates a, a, a better uh, coat uh, a better thick coat than uh, trying multiple coats of the lacquer so we're going to use this guy and shake it up again and uh, I, I'm thinking just one coat is enough. That's why I like using it because typically one coat's good. So I'm going to apply one coat and then uh, we'll see how it turns out. And it should go pretty quickly because it's such a small shell. Just make sure that the paint's coming out nice and even. And let's do this. And I'm going to just go around to this side. See if I can touch this. Turn around here. I'm going to hit this side as well. Oops. Paint stop. Paint stop coming out of the can. Nice. There we go. That's better. There we go. Yeah, I don't want to clog up the. Uh, sometimes if you get a clogged um, spray bottle, turn it upside down and spray it for a little bit, and that'll unclog it. And it's good when you're done using a can of paint for the day to turn it upside down and spray it and that cleans it out as well so that when you go to use it the next time uh, you know the nozzle will be all cleaned out so I've done one coat I don't want to do too thick if I did too thick it would start to run and you would actually see runs so this goes on thick all by itself we're gonna let this dry and see how it looks after it's dried this takes a while to dry maybe an hour or two but we'll do the one coat and if the one coats enough then we're done Otherwise, we might come in and try one more coat, but uh, yeah, let's check back in about an hour. All right, so it's been about an hour and it's uh, it's dry enough to touch. And I'm going to take a look at this guy and see if this gloss coat is thick enough for me. Um, hold it up here so you can see it more closely. You can see now that it's got, you know, a nice gloss coat on it. Do I want to add a second coat? It's very subjective. Um, this is a smaller one, so it would naturally have a little bit smaller gloss coat, but I think I will go ahead and add a second coat to this because this side is, didn't get quite as thick as I wanted it to. So we'll just do one more coat and that surely will be enough. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, this uh, thing keeps clogging up on me. And there's that side. Spin it around and hit this side again. Oh, I 
this nozzle is really giving me trouble. Um, let's see, how thick is that? Uh, I'm not quite seeing the thickness that I want to see. It doesn't seem like it's coming out of this can very good. All right, so we just finished this beautiful calorie and the the, the, dry, the clear coat is dry enough for me to hold it and the, the, the clear coat came out really nice. It's nice and thick and it's crystal clear. It's not grainy. And now um, the color in this, uh, in this calorie is able, and the spots are able to come out and it's protected and it's just more like it should be uh, in its kind of its natural state. So really happy with how this turned out going to put this in our collection and uh, and wrap up this section. So another uh, technique that you you might want to use in the future is uh, for for kind of restoring your shells is to clean up some of the rough edges on the shells. You do that not only for appearance but also to protect because a lot of times a rough edge may end up cracking even further than it already has. And uh, for examples of rough edges, I've, we find a lot of these, these uh, horse conks that have kind of very rough uh, edges on the outer lip here of the, of the aperture. And, uh, and you know, also the, the, the whelks that we find, particularly like the pear whelks and the figs, they can, they can also have kind of a, a, a rough edge along, along the outside. And this, this uh, big milk conch that I'm about to, to spray uh, for the video, or, or yeah, that will spray for the video, uh, it's got kind of a rough edge here that I would want to take care of as well, because uh, that, that could chip off even further and take a bigger chunk out of it. So I just sometimes I like to clean up the edge, and a great example of, of, of the difference it can make is when we found this, 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 this big horse conch, it had a really jagged rough edge, and I came in, with the sander and a, a, a block and, and, and clean this up and it really displays a lot nicer and it's just, it's protected. None of this is gonna chip off any further. So how would I clean up that edge? There's different ways. I have a, a big belt sander out in the garage that, that I just kind of laid it down on and did it, but you could easily use a, a, a sanding block. There's different kinds, but you want a nice flat edge. This is a, a sanding block with some sandpaper. I, I find a 200 grit of sandpaper works good. And you're just gonna go along that edge with a nice, you want a nice flat edge provided by a block. There's different kinds of blocks you can buy. Here's another one where you would just insert the paper. This is a Velcro or the sandpaper attaches. You're just gonna go along that edge and you're just gonna clean up the edge. And it's really gonna help your shell out, you know, in the future. Um, and other other techniques like for the, for this for this milk conch here, it's kind of a I can't get in there with a block sander. I would just wrap some 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 sandpaper around a, a, like a, a round thing and just kind of come in and just slowly. Got to be careful. I'm just going to slowly work that down until it's nice and smoothed out. And again, I'm I'm protecting the shell from future breakage by doing that. So just different techniques. 200 grit sandpaper I find works just fine. And uh, you know, another great example is, is we find a lot of uh, cones that have kind of a, a rough uh, outer lip here and we come in and we, we straighten that out. You know, like a block, a block sander would be, a, a block for this would be good. You could just kind of sand like this and you can just kind of clean up that outer edge. And some of these shells are, are precious, you know, and it really, it really helps them out. So another great technique for making your shells even prettier and protecting them from future breakage.
All right, so now we're gonna take everything we've learned in this video, all the little different skills and knowledge, and we're gonna put them all to use on two really great project shells. We just found these two shells in the, in the Keys. These are the two nicest, nicest examples of a milk conch and a, a horse conch that we've ever found. So super excited to find these. What an amazing trip. And uh, this milk conch is already very beautiful. It's probably one of the cleanest large shells we've ever found in the Keys, if not the cleanest. It, it, has this, it still has this golden brown periostracum on it. It's really a cool shell. Um, it just has a little bit of gunk growing on it that we're going to try to remove. Um, Got to be real careful with this because we don't want to damage this color, this beautiful color on this periostracum. It could come off. So really the only thing we're going to do with this shell to bring it to life is we're just going to scrub it a little bit to get some of this green stuff off that's growing around here. I know there's a little bit of gunk growing in a few places, but we'll probably just go in with a, a little light mixture of bleach. Or First, we might just try just with just scrubbing with, with soap and water and see if we can get that to come off because if we, we're a little scared to use bleach on it. But this one really doesn't require too much. And then once it dries, we got it clean the way we want it and dry it. We're going to hit it with a, with a light lacquer on the top to seal in this periostracum. If we don't, it might start to peel off. So we want to protect it. So we're going to hit it with the clear lacquer and uh, get that protected. And then this will be the nicest. We don't have to do the bottom. It's naturally glossy. It's in beautiful condition. So just the top and it'll be done. And just can't wait to finish this and put this on display. And then up next... This one's really going to test us. This one's tough because we have this gorgeous natural orange color on the inside, which we've never found before. Usually it's like a brown or a tan. This one has that really gorgeous orange to it. We want to preserve this. We don't want to get any chemicals on this. We can also see some orange on the shell. So we got to try to figure out a way to get this periostracum come off um, without kind of hurting the shell we got to use our, our mechanical tools to pop off a few of these things that are growing, these barnacles. And then we have this, this thicker stuff that's kind of growing on top. And I've never really dealt with that before. I think what we're going to try to do with this is we're going to just spot treat it with the muriatic acid. We're just going to come in and we don't, because we don't want to dip the whole thing in muriatic acid because it would start to eat away this shiny orange on the inside. So we'll probably just come in and spot treat it with muriatic acid and see if that starts to pull off some of this gunk that's been growing on top. We're just gonna take our time with this shell. It's probably gonna take a lot of work, but it's the nicest one we ever found. It'll be a treasure. And uh, we wanna just take our time and do it right and bring it to life and, and allow the original creator of this shell to be honored with, with the, uh, the sculpture and the work of art that it created. And uh, so let's get to work on it. I think first we'll do the milk conch. Just gonna scrub it a little bit really not too much to show there you're not going to see too much difference um, so i'm just going to scrub that and then I'll, I'll i'll shoot it with the lacquer after it dries and then i'll show you the after on that on this one i'll kind of go through the stages of where i'm at I'm, first i'm going to try to pop off some like this guy that's growing here and then i'm going to try to start spot treating it with acid and we'll just we'll just see how it comes out all right let's get to work all right so i've just been scrubbing this milk conch uh, with just water that's it water and I use a little toothbrush in some places and I've used this in a, a couple other places and I have been able to remove all the little gunk that was growing on this thing and I'm ecstatic because I didn't have to use any chemicals it just all came off with just a little bit of elbow grease and we were able to preserve this beautiful uh, outer natural skin the periostracum and now I'm gonna coat let this dry out for probably a day I want it to be fully dry and then we'll hit it with the clear lacquer and it's going to be done. And it's just a spectacular shell and uh, loving it. All right, so this one was easy. On to the next one over here. This one's going to be really difficult. So, so the first thing we're doing is I'm just going with, an, with a tool here and I'm just picking off some of the barnacles. And I also, I'm letting it soak in water for a little while. That tends to loosen up some of this stuff and make it, and I just barely touched this and it fell off. So that's cool. And then there were a couple other, here's another one right here. And this stuff looks like, I, look at how it's just coming off. Look at that. So this is great news. This stuff is just kind of falling off. And I'll, I'm just gonna come in with a, with a scrub brush and scrub it off. And this, this big layer of gunk is gonna just come right off with a little elbow grease. And uh, I'm hoping the stuff on this other side will come off as easily as well. 
um, and, and, and we won't have to use any, you know, very little chemicals to get this off. And then the periostracum, uh, so that we get the orange underneath, again, I might just use a little bleach, um, but uh, so far so good. I'm, I'm really happy that this, a lot of this stuff is just gonna fall right off very easily. And uh, look, it just, just kind of scrapes right off. So great news. All right, we'll stop back when I've made a little bit more progress. So this stuff's scraping off easier than we expected. So I just went and got a, a little chisel just to scrape a little bit quicker. And it's now starting to come off in nice big chunks. So we're going to make a little bit quicker progress than we originally expected, which is great news. And so, uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you that, you know, yes, we could maybe take this off with acid. But if we can do it without chemicals, it might be a little extra work. But um, the good news is that we don't have to use the chemicals and we know that we're not going to eat away at the shell and take away any of that pretty orange so uh, yeah let's we'll just keep scraping where we'll get through this pretty quickly all right so we after about 45 minutes of scraping and scrubbing just with elbow grease no chemicals at all just uh, brushes and little scrapers and things we have gotten all the stuff that was growing on it off there's still the only thing left now is the the periostracum which is this brown layer that you see here and uh, you can see underneath it there's a pretty orange so the periostracum comes off very easily with with a bleach water mixture so uh, the good news is is we'll only have to use bleach we we didn't have to use any muriatic acid so we'll go ahead and let this now soak in bleach and it's going to take uh, this remaining periostracum off real easily and uh, when we when we get done there should be just this beautiful orange shell left and at that point we'll let it dry out see what it looks like we might do a little bit of additional cleaning. I'll probably sand this edge down just to make this nice and, and clear, so and cl clean, excuse me, and smooth, so no little edges will break off, and it'll be ready for paint. But what a what a difference, huh? I mean, check that out. That is so cool that that beautiful thing was underneath all that muck. So really cool. All right, let's uh, let's let it soak in bleach for a little while. All right, so we have our our horse conch. It's soaking in about a a third bleach two-thirds water in a big bucket we're going to let this soak overnight and one of the questions you might be asking is hey you're soaking this orange colored shell in bleach are you worried that it might bleach out the orange color and for some unknown reason uh, bleach just doesn't impact the orange that's on horse conch so, and just to make sure because we didn't want to ruin this shell i let this horse conch soak in this 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 same mixture overnight before i put this one in it and it came out just as orange and pretty after 24 hours as it was when it went in. So we're, we're real confident that this shell, we won't lose any of the orange color on this big, beautiful shell. And uh, we'll check back in 24 hours and uh, it should be almost ready. All right, so we pulled the horse conch out of the bleach. Uh, the bleach had stopped bubbling. So when it stops bubbling, you kind of know it's done. It can't really do anything else. and. Uh, uh, it was about 24 hours we left it in the bleach and it looks fantastic it still has a little bit of periostracum on it in a couple places um, sometimes you just can't get it all to come off i've had that happen with some of the other ones where some of the periostracum just stuck on there and it just isn't going to come off and i don't want it even if i soaked it for another 24 hours because the bleach had stopped bubbling it's pretty much that's all i'm going to get off with bleach so what i'll probably do is i'll come back in and i will spot treat this with a little bit of the muriatic acid in the places where there's little stuff left. And hopefully that'll take off the rest. And I'll be real careful, I don't wanna damage it, but it came out beautiful. I mean, look how beautiful and orange it is. Looks fantastic, super excited. Um, can't wait to finish it up and then we'll let it dry out. Oh, by the way, after I, I pulled it out of the bleach mixture, I did then let it soak in just a regular bucket of water for a few more hours, just to let that bleach that might be soaked into the shell Kind of dilute a little bit and get a little bit of that out of there too so it's soaked for a couple extra hours in fresh water so yeah let me get to work on this and then we'll finish it up we'll, we'll uh, spray a clear coat on it to protect it and we'll be all done
right, so we're all finished with the shells. I've done spraying the clear coat on them, and man, they came out great. All that hard work, particularly on this one, was totally worth it. This one was really easy. This one was about four hours of work, but man, what a difference. My wife spotted this shell, this beautiful milk conch, as we were drifting along in the boat, and I jumped out and grabbed it. Honey, it was a great find on your part. Probably one of your, what do you think? Is it your best find ever or where does it rank for you? Hell yeah, of course it's the best find. Oh my gosh. It is really, <laughs> really beautiful. Oh, it's gorgeous. And uh, spin that thing around. Oh my goodness. Look. At that golden oh. brown periostracum, we were able to save that, preserve it. So it's, it's you know, it's got that, that white color on the inside that a milk conch is famous for, but we were able to save the beauty of the, oh, the outside. and This is definitely my favorite part. The legs yeah. on that. Yeah. Oh, look at that point. Nice and pointy. Oh, wow. Nice job, babe. And it came out great. You know, that, that, that thin coat of lacquer, clear coat lacquer is going to seal in that periostracum. And uh, it came out perfect. So, uh, again, nice find. Now let's show off this other beautiful horse conch that we worked on here. Let's twirl that one around and show that one off and uh, give everybody a chance to see that. So it's really orange on this side. It was so cool to find one that was so orange on the inside. And it's got a nice little bit of an orange tint on it here as well. On the other side, it, it maybe it was because this side was exposed to the sun more, or maybe this side had more growing on it. A little less orange, but still, you see how beautiful it cleaned up and now it's all sealed uh, by the clear coat so it's protected. We can handle it. We don't have to worry about it. It's gorgeous, honey. You did a great job on this. Well, wow. we teamed up on this. She, <laughs> she helped me do the scraping as well. So it was a, it was a team effort to get this done. But uh, we have a spot right above our TV where we had a previous uh, a horse conch, which was a beautiful one. I'll show you the difference between this one with all this orange that's in it and the one that we had previously. This was the one that we had sitting above our TV. And it's a beautiful shell but it just doesn't quite have that orange that the new one has. So we're really excited. And of course, this one's real pretty. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll put this in another room. It's beautiful too. We're real proud of this one. This was the first nice one we ever found. Um, it's a nice shell too, but it was really rare to find one with all that deep orange. So. Yeah, this one had more like a brown interior. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of them you'll find will be like that. So, um, and they're beautiful too. Nothing wrong with those. And we, we, we'll put that in another room, but yeah, it's pretty cool the way that one's so orange. So uh, this is it for the, this video. It's a long video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed this little project and maybe you picked up a few skills along the way as you watched all the different techniques for doing what, what we can do to keep these shells protected and, 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 and clean. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. We appreciate it.